Welcome back to the Highlands. It seems to me that there are a few misconceptions by a few people who think that being a landscape photographer is, whether it be professional or a hobbyist, that it's 24 hour back to back sunrises, sunsets, mist, fog, snow, high winds, stormy seas. The reality, you'll be pleased to know, is completely different. As a full-time professional landscape photographer, vast majority of the time I'm out photographing in very normal weather conditions, very flat, featureless and mundane. So the challenge under those circumstances, those sets of conditions, is to find something else that can compensate or at least go some way towards compensating for there being no light. Light is so important. Light is creating an image, but without it, we can still try and get something interesting. So today I've come down to Bolnakil Beach where it is a very flat, mundane, normal weather day. There's no drama, there's no light. But I'm gonna try and create some photographs which are of some interest. Now, yes, I've got a, a, an amazing subject matter here. The Bolnakil Beach is just an amazingly beautiful coastline. And so that's, that's one thing in my favour. But that alone won't be good enough. I still have to work hard. And, and I shall be trying to add texture to the photograph, layers and strong composition. Those, those three, four elements will go some way towards compensating for there being a lack of light, for there being very flat light. So that's the challenge for me today, is to try and get some half decent photographs. And if I don't, then this vlog doesn't get published. <laughs> so the first image I'm gonna take is in amongst the marron grass. Now the marron grass is gonna add texture to the photograph. And then by creating layers, where I've got the beach and the ocean, then I've got another beach, and then I've got the hills and then the sky. By creating layers, I'm also creating depth. So even though I don't have the light, there is no light at the moment, I've got the texture in the grass and then I've got the layers beyond. So it's creating just a little bit of interest there, even though there's no light. So, uh, but I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll show you how I've composed it and I'll just talk you through it. Okay, as you can see, as I was describing, we've got the mound grass in the bottom of the frame and it's going up at 45 degrees, sloping out to the right of the image and it's creating a frame. And this frame is full of layers made up of the beach, the ocean and the secondary beach and the land beyond. These layers and the texture of the grass is adding a real strong composition. So even though I don't have any light, we are still creating an interesting image by using composition and texture and layers in the photograph. So I've walked to the far end of the first beach here at Bolnick Hill. There's two beaches, there's one behind you, and this is the first one. It's the bigger one of the two. And what I love about this composition is the sweeping lines created by the beach. The line takes you like a beautiful curve that takes you to the building at the far end of the, of the beach. And as a bonus, I've got some sunlight on the clouds that's just moving across. So I've got my Nikon D850 
24 to 70 mil lens and I've got a, uh, a 10 stop filter on there so <clears throat> I'm getting an exposure of 20 seconds. I just want to see what it looks like just to slow the whole scene down. Again, it's, a, it's another idea when the light's not brilliant is to be able to use the, the neutral density filters just to slow the whole scene down and get a, a different feel to the image. I've struck a little bit lucky, I have to be honest, with the sunlight on the white clouds. So I'm just taking advantage of that. But it's just so peaceful here. It's just so beautiful. This is actually um, MOD property just around here. We've got Cape Wrath, which is just over there, which is a big, uh, a big military uh, concern. But it is very, very beautiful. It's very, very peaceful. But just waiting for those clouds just to kiss with the sunlight. It's beautiful. I'll bring you down and show you how I'm taking this photograph. OK, so this is how I've got the photograph composed. I'm using the line where the ocean meets the beach as it sweeps through from the center bottom of the image out to the left hand side before it curves back in, leading the eye to the building at the far end of the beach. Now, I'm probably going to put a 16 by 9 crop to the composition because I want to emphasize the location of the building by including as much of the ocean to the right. I think this is going to allow the photograph to breathe. But as you can see, I've got a bit lucky with the clouds in the distance rolling in and catching the low sunlight. The sun is coming in from 90 degrees to my left and it's just catching the clouds and the hills behind, which is it's all adding interest to the scene. But as you can see, there's no massive drama going on in this photograph. There's no dramatic weather conditions. It's quite peaceful. It's quite melancholic, actually. It's quite nice. But I think with the previous image I showed you, we had textures and layers adding depth and interest to the photograph. Whereas with this one, I'm emphasizing the line to the building, which is, to my mind, the central character of the photograph. And by including as much of the ocean as I can here, I'm also emphasizing the building's locality and its relationship it has with the scene. So with the 13 second exposure, let's see how it comes out. Okay, so I'm trying something a little bit different now. I've lowered the tripod just to get a different perspective on a, on a similar type of composition. Um, I also found that being quite high up, um, the, the expanse of sea between the foreground and the house in the background was, was vast. So I wanted to reduce that space. And by doing so, I can just lower the tripod and it just slim, slims it out just a little bit. I've still got the, the Nikon D850 with the 20, what have I got? 24 to 70 mil lens on and I'm shooting the F11 and I've also, I've put a, the big stopper on, the 10 stop uh, case magnetic filter on the front of the lens and that's given me an exposure of 30 seconds. It's just calming the whole situation down. But as you can see, there's no light. Yet again, there's no light. So it's a case of just trying out different things. So, you know, we've tried textures and depth and, and uh, leading lines, and now we're just changing the height of the tripod uh, and then just slowing the whole image down with a 30 second exposure. So it's just a case. Unfortunately, we don't have the dramatic light. If we had dramatic light, um, you know, it'd probably be a lot easier. So you have to, I have to think so much harder um, when there's no, there's no drama in the, in the weather. But um, it, it, it's, it's challenging and it's good to be able to create uh, something slightly different, although it's not what perhaps you would uh, primarily wish for. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that might work. Um, it's a different take on it, isn't it? It's a different composition and it's just trying something different. Um, but I always find that uh, by lowering the tripod, um, I do quite a lot actually, and I quite like just the, 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 the dynamic, impactful, um, 
perspective that that gives me. So I'm quite pleased with it. But uh, yeah, let's see how this one uh, comes out. What I've done, I've, I've, I've used a bit of the, the, the rocks in the background. You can just see behind me. I've just used that as, a, as an anchor in the, uh, in, in the bottom of the photograph that just leads you through uh, towards the house and towards the mountains. So uh, let's just see how this one's, uh, how this one's processed. What I love about Bolna Kill is it's got two beaches, two fantastic beaches, absolutely beautiful. And it never gets very busy here because I think, because just up the road is Durness. And Durness is such a popular place with, and rightly so, it's a beautiful beach. But this, in my opinion, is a much, much better location. Maybe because I'm looking at it through the eyes of a camera, I don't know but it never gets busy. So what we're doing, we've been to the first beach, so I'm gonna walk, well, I know I'm walking towards the second beach. It's uphill, as you can hear. But this beach is, because it's a little bit further away from the car park, it's, um, it's a little bit quieter than the first one because I don't know about you, but I found that first one too busy for my liking. So let's go to a quieter one. It's a completely different beach. It's the same, obviously it's the same sand and the same ocean, but it's a different type of feel to it. Um, so let's get up there and uh, see what it's like. Okay, so for this photograph, I've put the 14 to 24 mil lens on and I want to use a polarizer. So I have to use this beast. And it's got to, it's got to be securely fastened absolutely 100% here because if it drops, it goes over the edge and down below. So absolutely critical that this is tightened. I think so. And I'm not going to put a polarizer on as well. So just get a polarizer. <clears throat> now it's a magnetic one. So I'm placing all my trust in the case magnetic polarizing filter. It should be okay. That seems okay to me. Right, the reason I've got the 14 to 24 mil lens on is because there's some rocks down here in the foreground which I want to include in a vertical shot looking out to sea. And I need to go quite close to the cliff's edge. So everything has to be double checked. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm going in. Okay, so I'm in position. I found the composition that I want. I'm perched perilously on the edge of this cliff. But the reason I want to be here is because of the rock in the foreground is its shape and it's leading into the, into the rest of the image. It's taking you into the image. So it's, so it's giving you the depth that you need um, in the absence of any, any dramatic light. There's also the beach on the right hand side and I waxed lyrically about this beach on the way up but it looks as though there's 
been a lot of footfall on the beach over the weekend. And so it looks kind of scruffy if I include all of the beach in the photograph. So I'm only going to include a small slither of it, which is le less affected where the tide has been in and is now going out. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's still there. You can still see the beach. Uh, but it is so beautiful. It is just so incredibly peaceful. I love it. I just love it. But again, this is another way of um, making up for the absence of drama, of dramatic light. You know, we've got no stormy seas. We've not got high winds. I wouldn't be here if it was high winds. But we've got no stormy seas, high winds. Uh, there's no drama. There's no light. And so really, uh, we have to reflect the conditions that we're working in. And it's fairly subdued light. And so this is quite a subdued, low key, nice photo, you know. Uh, but we're using the rock to create a little bit of depth and leading you into the photograph. Yeah, I like it. It's beautiful. Well, the location's beautiful. Let's have a look at the photo. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's the end of my brief visit to uh, the amazingly beautiful, gorgeous Bolnakil Beach. And I wanted to come here today particularly because the forecast was very flat. It was, uh, was going to be a featureless, normal day. And I really wanted to sort of dispel these myths that uh, landscape photographers exist in this amazing bubble of sunrises and sunsets and stormy weather and snow and drama most of the time it's like this most of the time it's just normal it's just flat and mundane but it's great fun in being able to create different imagery it's quite e it's easier to photograph scenes when they are full of drama because you can react and the adrenaline's rushing and it's a, a fantastic experience but most of the time it's like this most of the time it is fairly normal and that's an, op an opportunity to uh, be creative, to look at textures and look at composition and depth in your images and leading lines, um, ch changing the height of your tripod. These are all fantastic challenges and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please subscribe to this, to this new channel of mine, which is dedicated entirely to the photographing of the Scottish Highlands, the Northern Highlands in particular. And I'd love it if you were able to join me on my journey. But for now, I'm gonna sign off and I'm going to leave you with this beautiful, gorgeous landscape. Bye for now.